much, Kelly and I just need to go in the overhead compartment. We made it back to, well, we made it back to Vienna, driving to Leo Gang today, which kind of feels like a home away from home since we've been here a couple times now. It's like the only, only stop on the circuit that we've actually been to a few times, so. I was actually surprised. I was joking about feeling weird on the right side of the road again, mm -hmm. but it feels really weird. Oh, it took oh. me a second to, wow. to get readjusted. Dude, it's such a trip. Like, you wake up and you're like, what country am I in? What side of the road do I drive on? Do they have schnitzel here? Feel good to be in Leo Gang? Yeah, <laughs> feels like home, kinda. I think I look forward to it here, cause there's like okay trail riding, uh, quick loops from the house. We've been going to that hotel for five years now, and like the people at the Bach are pretty awesome. Like they, everyone welcomes us when we're back. They're all like, hey, good to see you. And like, I don't know. This is pretty amazing. Like, you wake up in the morning and all you see is the grass, and then an hour later the fog goes away and these crazy mountains pop out of nowhere. It's one of the most spectacular places I've ever been. So what's the plan for today? Well, since you guys are totally unprepared once again, <laughs> hey, we gotta have a video. <laughs> We're gonna attempt, not really a setup video, but uh, an explanation of how certain functions affect trail riding and we're not going to go super in depth we're just going to look at the fork for now because fork and shock setting the, everything does the same thing so you can apply one thing to the other for the most part um, so what we're going to do is try to ride this little trail bike trail and make some changes to the fork and see if we can explain through words and video what's happening as you're doing certain things one of the like one of the main points we talk about with everyone is if you make a change you have to know where you're starting from if you don't know where you're starting from you don't know where you've gone it's pretty deep huh Jordy Clark, I, <laughs> I feel like somebody might have said that before <laughs> but also the most critical thing is if you make a change and it's not better then go back to where you were don't continue making changes and we're going to kind of show you how that can happen and why it's a bad thing. Sweet. Let's ride some bikes. <laughs> <laughs> so we're definitely uh, a little pressed for time, but we're just gonna try to find at least one good portion of trail that we can get some good slow-mo clips on, and then we'll head back to the hotel and have Jordy break down those clips. Relatively steep little bit of trail with some big roots. Uh, not like, ideal but it really does show specific moments when adjustments are affecting the ride of the fork so we can just roll through the first one it's like it's basic it just gets you an idea of what the suspension looks like when it's hopefully pretty close to right yeah just so here you can see the fork tracking off the back side of a drop then hits compression right there follows kind of follows the contours of the ground but the hands are staying relatively level so first test was compression full plus this one might be the least visible because it it doesn't totally change the amount of travel the fork uses but it changes the speeds that it moves so this is compression fully plus the fork using as much damping as it can. And I think when you watch the initial contact on things, you watch the hands, everything starts to bounce a little bit more. And it, every little hit, the bike starts to move a bit more than it did before. And you see that second little root, the fork hardly moved, it just skipped across the top of it. And that's exactly what's happening to the contact patch of the tire. If the fork's not moving, then the tire's gonna skip over the same thing. So you're not actually generating traction. You need a little bit of compression to kind of push that contact patch into the ground. But if you have too little, 
the geometry gets a little wonky. If you have too much, then the tire just skips across the ground. And that's kind of what we saw there. Second was compression full minus. It's funny watching these for the first time on a screen too. Yeah, you, do, you see it for sure. You see on the landing after that second route, the fork's using a ton of travel in the very beginning. It gets relying purely on the air spring. And it, it's still a little bit tricky to tell because it does still skip across things. But the amount of motion in the beginning of the travel is twice as much as it is with all the compression turned on. And I think it's far more glaring when we go to the rebound side as to the functions of the controls. You can, f like, when we did this, the feeling was intense. Like, I think even in this, we were talking about how much we were changing our riding position just because immediately you feel like the fork's not there. It just starts wobbling around. So you, you instantly kind of brace yourself, and I think we went slower too. We are trying to hit each one of these routes and with the compression fully open, nobody really wanted to do it. So we went back to our normal compression settings and closed both rebounds high and low. And again, it immediately feels terrible. The front end of the bike is really low and you'll see why in just a minute. I think it's right here. You see the fork compress take a hit on that first route, and then it spends half the time just kind of sitting in its travel and not moving. That was that one. You can see after each impact, the fork stays deep in its travel. And when you compare it to the fast rebound one, which we'll do next, you see why a, your, your chassis is nose heavy because the fork is stuck down basically. B, you're riding in a stiffer part of the travel because the beginning of the fork is soft and smooth. And then as it progresses through the travel, it gets firmer and firmer. So when you slow your rebound down a lot, the fork stays compressed and you're always riding in that firmer part of travel which isn't ideal for traction or hand fatigue or anything really. The final setting, rebound wide open, um, means full negative, full minus. Same boring clip. You can see it right away, even entering that turn, the fork sitting way higher. And then it immediately goes back to full travel after a hit and it's actually pushing your hands back. So this is a case of it being so fast that it's probably, not only is it impacting the next small obstacle, like with, with a force, so it's actually pushing you backwards, but as you go to push in or to weight something, it's gonna fight and push back. So this is, it's, it's, well, obviously it's the opposite of the slow rebound in that it's always riding in the top of its travel and it feels very vague because the fork's moving constantly. So nothing ever settles down and you don't get a consistent contact patch with the ground because it's always waiting, unwaiting, waiting, unwaiting. So that's the whole point of testing and bracketing, which is basically what we're doing here is to find that sweet spot of enough rebound that it tracks the ground without skipping over the top of things, either because it's too slow or too fast. One of the main things we're trying to get across here is the whole make a change, and if it's not better, go back. Because what you can see with the slow rebound, I hope you can see it, it is weird to see. Like it's not just this massively glaring mm obvious thing, but it is when you ride it. And if you watch it a few times, you can totally tell. But so say you close your rebound and it's a little slow, but you don't go back to what was good. 
you instead think, oh, it's, it feels a little bit harsh. Well, that's because the rebound's holding your fork down into the stiffer part of travel and you're not able to use the beginning of the fork to absorb the small vibrations and small impacts. So then a lot of people start taking compression off. And that helps, but it helps for the wrong reason. Now you've made two mistakes and there's probably no way you're going to come back out of that because you've slowed your rebound down too much. And instead of going back to a good place, you opened compression to make up for that first mistake. So now your fork's riding even lower because it doesn't have compression to hold it up and it has too much rebound that's holding it down. And if you flip that around the other way and they're both wide open, the fork's gonna move so much because it's gonna spring back fast and then it also has no compression so it's gonna collapse fast. And that's why we bracket. So we just did extremes and if you do bracketing, you're actually gonna go in the middle and then go to one extreme, the other extreme, and then start breaking that down into sections that work for you. I mean, I think the biggest thing you should take is that you should go do this. It immediately gives you a feel of what those adjustments do. And whether or not you see what's going on on the video, you will feel it. And after you feel it and watch it again, I think you'll be like, oh yeah, I get it. That's what's happening. So hopefully this was helpful in some way or other. This idea for an episode actually came based off of some comments that we've gotten in previous episodes. So as usual, we'll be back every day this week here in Leo Gang up until race day on Saturday. So if there's anything you want to see, let us know and we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>